play already with my little kind of wooden thing here. Let's do that for about five minutes. Take an object in your hand of your choice, whatever that is. Get comfortable, lean back. Do a little bit more, let's do seven. <sighs> so you just feel free to keep your eyes open or closed as you like. And um, the first thing is when you take that in your hands, um, give it a name or a purpose, bypass that very quick and tap into the haptic, the temperature, the is it round or sharp or soft or smooth. And then I invite you to slow down your speed by half, go really slowly. Uh, maybe slow it down by half again. And whatever wants to occur or comes up, so that all of you is welcome. And as you all know by now, we're just looking for this tinglish, pleasant, sensual sensation. Pleasant, maybe even pleasurable, for no reason, just because you move. And if your mind wanders or feeling coming up, then that's all welcome. The invitation is just to bring your attention straight back to this sensation in your skin. And when you find a spot somewhere, the invitation is just to feel. No goal, no agenda, no purpose, just sensing.
Okay, and then I invite you to slow your movement down until you stop. Stay there for a moment. And just notice what you notice in your body. Mm. And slowly bring your attention back to the screen. Our Italian friend Raja just entered the room. Your pee buddy. <laughs> So, hi Raja, you're just uh, joining straight in after the meditation, so please hold your horses, we start in a few moments with you, or we just introduce you in a few moments, so everybody never knows you, except Nicola. But I would like to have a quick um, check-in, anything that anybody would like to share, what did you notice, what was coming up? How did you felt? Yeah, thanks. Yeah, it was interesting um, feeling that thing and just like watching you guys. And and then uh, I had a session today with a guy who has struggling with some issues. And uh, and I did the exercise with him, and he got extremely bored, extremely bored, so bored that I was just thinking he's just like switching off the computer. Um, or, or, or the core, <clears throat> and that was just like coming up again while I was watching you, and uh, and then some story was occurring to it, and I uh, can go into that straight, um, but maybe, maybe not. Has anybody brought anything we kind of want to chew on, or anything, a theme thing? Finger was up first, and then you okay, cool. So th then, <clears throat> then I just dive quickly into different stages of male orgasm. Um, um, what I would like to say first about this dynamic about male orgasm or orgasm in itself or sexual energy in itself, I would like to say first the four different dynamics of sexual energy. And, and I shared that in the training, uh, I, I guess. yeah. But this is important just like to put that in kind of um, relationship with each other. So there are four different ways of sexual energy. One is um, procreation. Some of you might have heard that, yeah. And procreation is literally based on this kind of how orgasm and climax is literally formed. Yeah, and that, I, I share that in a, in a little bit. The second one is recreation. That's fun, joy, play, having, you know being kinky or doing all kind of stuff related to sexual joy, you know, just like everything that's fun and playful around that. And the third one is um, uh, rejuvenation, so the kind of way of you use sexual energy for your health, you know, just build it up for your stamina, for your stem cells, for your age for your vitality for your whatever it's just like you use it in combination with yoga is super powerful yeah. so that's the reason why tantra and yoga got separated a few thousand years back because both of them combine super powerful and then the fourth one is transformation so the when you stay long enough in the field and you do release dmt and all the other neurotransmitter then Literally what happens is DMT is just flushed into the kind of a cerebrospinal fluid and in a cerebrospinal fluid you have some, some uh, fibers in there, they're producing stem cells and they're just like high, uh, hyper kind of amped up with a frequency of DMT creates a really transformative field in the body. So the entire Kundalini awakening and the spine movement and all that so is a transformative part of sexuality. By saying that, when you go back to the first one to procreation, 
Um, and I'd like to say it from that perspective, kind of just like, hey, you guys, specifically you guys, where I'm from, uh, I'm one of. Do you want to have every time when you ejaculate another baby? <laughs> every time you have sex and ejaculate, do you want to have a baby? <laughs> no. <laughs> then because we would all have a lot, right? And then, then I, I ask kind of just like, could you consider to put procreation in a sacred corner where it's just really been built for conscious offspring? Yeah. And uh, using just uh, recreation, rejuvenation and transformation for that idea. And by saying it from that perspective, um, then it makes sense to understand the kind of structure of an orgasm, that you can see that orgasm in itself is literally um, <clears throat> tacked to the reward system, yeah? to, the, to the dopamine release, to satisfaction, um, is a survival mechanism. Yeah, so as mammals, you know, in the open field out there, <laughs> not in the closed sleeping room beyond closed doors, uh, it has to go quick and fast because it's a super vulnerable space for a mammal, and uh, uh, yeah, specifically for the male. So we just have to be in sympathetic, we have to perform, we have to go quickly in, we have to make sure that we're not getting attacked and being eaten, and then we just like deliver the... Um, the load and then job is done as, 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 as fast as possible. And so uh, the, the reward that comes out of the climax, what is literally the, the, the dopamine spike, is there that we do it again and again and again and again and again. Yeah. Um, but you know, in our ages and our time, where we just have the the, the other realms of consciousness based on um, transformation and spirituality and all that, uh, when we just tapping out of the survival mechanism of procreation, we just recognize that making babies is not the only thing of having sex. You know? And then it makes sense to understand the anatomy and the architecture, what an orgasm literally is about and how it, how it functions. So the idea behind that is that when you start to get turned on um, and uh, you, you have the arousal phase where the erection literally occurs, and this is not only for the man's uh, erector sponge as well for the woman, you know, when you're getting aroused, this... Tissue is getting swollen, you get hard, so the arousal phase. Yeah? And when the arousal phase is literally there, then you have a so-called plateau phase. Yeah? So you just play in the plateau phase, and then the plateau phase can either, I don't know, five seconds, or can be an hour, or two hours, or as long as you like. And then at the end of the plateau phase, you have a so-called emission phase. And the emission phase is literally where the orgasm, the climax, the ejaculation is literally, you know, ignited. Yeah. So, so the emission phase can go super fast. Yeah. So sometimes it, it just comes from a, from a corner and you have no idea where it's from. And the point of no return, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what happens, even if your neighbor just like knocks at the door and you just like in the moment or you come, you come. It's just like... When the when the emission phase is igniting the climax, you're done, yeah. And then when you're over the edge, you have this thing coming down. Yeah? And I have a certain graph for that, and the graph actually shows as well how the um, release of other neurotransmitter, for example, like serotonin, when that spikes in where you feel euphoric and then when that goes down you have um, melatonin coming in and melatonin makes literally um, the entire structure of DMT and oxytocin and dopamine kind of 
kicks it down into a basement and then the show is over. So by saying that, by understanding the procreative part of your sexual energy and you understand the anatomy of an orgasm is, you know, the arousal phase is that what I love to get hard. You know, this is, feels good in my body. I just feel this kind of neurotransmitter and I feel this kind of hormones and I just feel yummy and juicy and it just feels good. Yeah. And when I get hard, so, so, so the, the um, arousal phase and I reach the plateau, playing in the plateau, this is literally where the, where the tantric idea of lovemaking is happening. Yeah, so you just play with two people on the plateau as long as you possibly can. Yeah. Some of us are still mammals that need to get the job done as quick as possible. <laughs> Or they can't, they, they, they can't handle somebody else's sympathetic response and then they just come, that happens as well. But um, the, the idea of, of what I practice with edging is literally being aware in the plateau where the emission phase towards the climax is ignited. So it's, 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 the, it's literally the hyper state of arousal of sexual turn on it's just like you know one more stroke one more kind of movement one more touch and you just you just done right and bringing the awareness to this very specific point uh, i have come to notice that this is um, amplifying awareness presence uh, the capability of being with what is dramatically in my life, wherever, however I do. So this is from the plateau phase into the um, emission phase. So this is where the highest awareness literally is possible. Does that make sense? There's a lot of talking on this little question. Practice, practice, practice. <laughs> No, what I, yeah, right. Just like, okay, just <laughs> how, how you get there, you just book one of my packages. <laughs> no, how, how do you stay there is, you know, when, when, the, when the emission phase is ignited, you know, where you're just actually getting ready for the shot, um, you have a lot of dopamine in the system. Yeah, so a lot of, endorphins and just like yeah just you just you just really to, ready to explode yeah and i come to notice what makes it really easy for me is a combination between breathing yeah for example this 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 breath was what what sana teaches um uh neurotransformative breath work you know i, I had some kind of influences there and this is like this <laughs> and this breathing really helps <laughs> yeah this is one part another part is through this touching this object here and having my awareness in my penis in the sensation of my skin feeling the pleasurable sensation i just slow down and through feeling the pleasure on my skin, I start to release more oxytocin, I relax more. So my sympathetic nervous system, what is at the end of the plateau, where the emission phase started, starts to relax down into a more sensual kind of parasympathetic, ah, relaxing sensation. Yeah. So this is not only a meditation, this is literally your life savior when you're on the edge, when you make love. I cannot really put that in a box, but my, when I observe myself, I just have this shorter breath, like, <laughs> and then in the inhale, and I expand, and then I have definitely an, <sighs> like a long sigh, and this sigh, it just comes like an impulse, and that shows me that my nervous system relaxes into into parasympathetic i cannot make it but somehow it does it when i when i when i breathe that way and i have a few other things about kind of just like kind of moving my head kind of kind of cuts the impulse that 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 works pretty intense 
And so there are kind of different um, different ways. This, that was Raja uh, flipping off. Um, so there are kind of different th different ways, but um, that was just more like in the beginning. Right now, when I'm on this on this phase, um, um, I, I I just I don't know. I have the space. I I, I don't need all this anymore. I'm I'm, I'm capable of being there. I, I can even be there in a relaxed space when my partner is just going through multiple vaginal orgasmic convulsions just like there's 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 no in my nervous system there's no no urge to to climax anymore it's like my nervous system can conduct and be with all the sensations yes you, you know what is a really interesting thing and I'm curious to hear that from you, Alex and Nicola, um, because you you are our kind of uh, polyamory and uh, long-term relationship heroes. Um, <laughs> you know, when if I would make love with a woman who is neurologically on the sympathetic and is going into the clenching and the contraction phase, yeah, if she is climaxing in a contraction and has not this expansion orgasmic convulsions it doesn't matter who i make love with they would probably pull me over this edge with them yeah so what it needs is an is somebody on the other side who has not this contractive squeezing sympathetic male goal oriented approach of coming to an to an orgasm, because this, that 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 kills it immediately as well in my nervous system. My partner, I'm making love with. Before I make love with her, I have a very clear conversation, and I make that really clear that this is not about the goal, and I and and I really check in with her, and and if she could not agree to that, I probably would not make love. Um, I ask her that this is not about the climax and the goal to come and that we need to team up here and that we have have both the same intention and that is just like being in this in, 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 on the plateau and before the emission phase and if we both becoming aware of it, even if it's getting wild and crazy and we are noticing, okay, there's an emission phase coming in, then we trust each other that we have teamed up and keeping each other in the place of the um uh of of the plateau it's a different thing if the woman comes as a male oriented contractive climax or in this expansion convulsing orgasmic stages in these orgasmic stages there's no impulse for me but if she, yeah, you're so lucky. It's, uh, sorry, we are literally fucked. <laughs> but but if she would just climax and you know this this, I call that uh, kind of um, cock or, or kind of a, a greedy pussy, kind of this clenching and squeezing and controlling and sympathetic kind of doing. It's just like I have no chance. You know if if. You, as a, as a man, have the goal to to climax and to come, and uh, or you have a goal. If you have the goal or the climb, uh, if you have the goal or the agenda that the woman should come, you have a goal. If you have a goal that you don't want to come, you have a goal. Yeah. So so the 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 idea is getting the goal out of the way. And finding the flow that is kind of goalless. If you have the goal to be goalless, you still have a goal. <laughs> it's an oxymoron. So it's just like you have to relax that there is no goal. And in, instead of instead of having the goal or the no goal goal, you just feel, you sense that makes that makes the difference. Feel, you know whatever you feel yeah it's it's so interesting when you say that what comes up for me is the distinction between being sexual and having sex 
and 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 that makes a big difference and specifically you know when you open or poly then there's the question what does polyamory means anyway it's just like you're just like you're just op open and capable to love several people right and then th the question is when you when you when you poly you can be polysensual you can be polysexual and then the question is being polysexual does it mean as well intercourse and you know so everybody has to find their own kind of distinction that is kind of livable so there's you know I, I and that's a great thing about it that there is no pre-structured frame that fits all so everybody has to f has, has to figure that out themselves how it works best for them i love this conversation i, I, I love these questions because they are so rich and i, I could just dig and dive even deeper into that because it's so much fun you know this is just it's, in, it's infinite and 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 the questions the 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 questions makes me always um activated and talking about it and i would like to go into direct and indirect at this point i don't know if that's the answer but this is my answer and i'm totally open for um being totally off so i just like make that up while i'm speaking <laughs> as far as i know the bridge between the left and the right brain hemisphere between women is much bigger than of the male's brain that means that that and i guess it has to do as well with this with a um uh, a, a duality brain of the women's cervical connection you know this kind of the the uterus to the brain and the vagus nerve activity so that, that has a different kind of function and the openness and the left and right brain hemisphere and the connection to the body because the womb and the connection to the uterus and and creating offspring it's it's a different wiring undeniable so sorry guys we are all kind of a little bit underdeveloped so <laughs> this is a, this is a different thing it's not better or uh, anything else we're just different there yeah and for us men we have a very strong visual turn on so so men are by nature uh, visual oriented and for example, I had that just just on the weekend. Um, uh, I don't know how many hours of videos I have created a lot <laughs> because I'm visual. And I was laying in a certain position with my partner here where we were laying on our back and our our genitals were just like together, yeah and 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 and, and, and I was looking from my perspective, towards my cock her yoni her breasts and her face and this like this is just the most delicious landscape that is existing yeah and there's and, and so i took my phone i'm not showing you the photo <laughs> and i took my phone and i make a photo and i said to her this is what we see and this is fucking amazing so i showed that to her and then i said now show me what you see and then she made the photo and, and she sees from her perspective her breasts. Then, then my cock is disappearing behind the pubic bone. And then you see a little bit of, of about my body and then my beard. <laughs> so this is, this is not, not, this is not even a speck of excitement of that what we see, you know, specifically, you, you know, there, there, there is this, this, um this this ancient sculpture of a woman you know just like just just a neck and then you see these big boobs and this rounding and just like whew. we men see women differently as women see themselves or see see men uh, it's it's a complete different thing and because we are visual differently wired because our bridge in the brain has a, a different function we perceive visual stimulation differently and it's so important for us and that's why pornography works for men and differently for women so 
that's that's the, the first part of the answer. The second part of the answer is that what Alex said is right. The indirect route is when you do something to get a response back about what you do, that what you do is less important than what is coming back. In an ideal world, when the direct and indirect is open, they are both connected and they create a neurological feedback loop within you can engage. And we men do that a lot with visual. I, for, I, I do that a lot with visuals. You can have a direct experience with every sense. You know, when you, you have a direct experience when you're listening to music. You have a direct experience when you just like go with, you know, it's, it's a direct experience. You hear that directly. You, know, you have a direct experience when you see something, when you taste or when you smell something. It can be all direct, but it can be as well all indirect. Yeah. So, 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 for example, when you lick somebody or something, and you just don't go for the taste, you just go for the, or you don't go for the sensation, you just go for the respond. It's the same. But if you, as a, as a man, um, or when I'm as a man, um, um, having eye contact, for example in intercourse it's i i would su subscribe that as soul fucking i'd love that it's so deep but when i'm on another point for example when i'm in doggy style for example from behind just like i just i just love to see and touch this nice butt you know and, and even i just love to spank it and do it and i love even when I spank it to get the response, you know, there's this, this spine convulsion and just like, and, 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 and it amplifies what I see through the entire experience of what I feel. So the direct and indirect is a massive dance of experiences through senses. And um, it's a different experience for men in the visual stimuli than for women in the visual stimuli because women more wired to sense and to feel in the physical sensation. What what most men having more difficulties with. Not because there's something wrong or off, it's because we are differently wired. I wish there would be in a woman's body. <laughs> Does that make sense? Yeah. The I I think there's a lot of misconception uh about the indirect route making it kind of uh difficult sometimes to enjoy what is coming back and then feeling guilty and making um ourselves or making myself wrong about that I'm um love a response and a love a reaction. And I think it's an important distinction to make as well when you just um, want to get off the horse as a recovering pleaser, kind of just being aware of where do you tend to do something to be liked, to be loved, because you just would feel awkward or bad or wrong if you don't get appreciation or where you just really enjoy <laughs> A response because you have given something from a generous place and you would feel s sincerely sad if somebody would not honor a gift yeah and and uh, you, you know my my biggest mistake of doing consent work um, in in the first place based on the wheel was just like a big prize for years of consent rigidity and kind of putting myself in that box of kind of this is how it is and and this is how it has to be and i i i i think we don't do ourselves a favor if we cutting ourselves off from all varieties of 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 experiences in the moment and i guess they are just differently for some you know it, this is a great thing when you're in a relationship just like yeah you have meinungsverschiedenheiten 
you, you have disagreements about certain things, how you see and feel it. That's great. That's the reason why we have language. Okay, thank you so much. Have a beautiful Monday. And uh, Wednesday is hand meditation. It's 15 minutes. Um, feel welcome to join as well. And um, Monday in a week is the monthly Monday, but just um, this is where you can invite other people for free. So, so on this monthly Monday, every first Monday, everybody can join to see who are these guys, what are they talking about, what's going on. So feel free to invite and welcome people. All right. Thank you so much and uh, love you. Bye-bye. Ciao, ciao.